Who's your favorite classical composer? Don't know too many, to be honest. Sorry. Right. Uncultured I guess, Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> All right, guess what? Today we're at Guitar Center, which is basically God's place on earth for musicians. Today, we're here to buy a digital piano. People always ask me on my channel, like, Lionel, what is the digital piano that I should get as a beginner? And the truth is that question is not possible to answer in like two sentences, okay? So I thought I would make this whole video to show you guys exactly how you should go and buy a digital piano. What are the price ranges to consider? What are the styles, the sizes, the keyboard action, and the sounds to think about? And this will be different than any other review on the internet. Who's the best? I like Mozart. You like Mozart? I'm a renegade. I like his Moonlight Sonata. He's one of my favorites. That's Beethoven. Oh, sorry. How could you not know that? <laughs> the point is, I'm gonna try to give you guys my unbiased, actually extremely biased feedback on exactly which keyboards to get when you go into a music store such as Guitar Center. Okay, so when you go to the store, you want to make sure you bring along your personal set of headphones. You also want to make sure that your headphone jack has like one of these things. This is the thing that actually sticks into the keyboard and you just put it in like this. And this goes in the keyboard, okay? So first thing you want to do is you want to ask the sales associate where the pianos are. The are going to be back in the high-tech section. Okay, cool. Thank you. So here we have the majority of the keyboards, okay? There is quite a selection here. So you're probably wondering like, where do I start Lionel? Okay, so there are four main things to consider when you're buying a digital piano. The first thing is price, size, the sound quality, and then the feeling of the keys, okay? And I would say out of those four, the feeling of the keys is the most important, but you wanna make sure that you check off the boxes for the other three as well. First of all, never get any keyboard that's less than 88 keys, okay? If you get less than 88 keys, you're a scrub and you know it, okay? Don't be a scrub. Look, so here are some of the common brands that you find at a guitar center, okay? There's Roland, there's uh, Williams. Williams is complete garbage, by the way. Don't ever get Williams. I'm sorry if you're from Williams, but no, don't get Williams. So this one is the Casio CDP S100. It's at $450. This one is like the most basic entry level keyboard that you can get that's worth it. Okay, so honestly the keys feel a little cheap, although they do have like this nice matte finish. So actually one of my earlier videos playing the Black Star was filmed on using a Casio. Honestly, the two top dogs are Yamaha and Kawaii, okay? Roland is also a good pick, but Yamaha and Kawaii, they actually make real acoustic pianos. So they really know what they're doing. Look at this. If you see a keyboard that has these kind of keys, stay away, unless you're like a little kid. You're like three years old, this is the perfect keyboard for you. Get the 88 key and make sure it looks like this, which means it's fully weighted and it feels and sounds like a real piano. The people that are coming, are they usually looking for like beginner level or like a van? They just usually like, beginner yeah. Level. Well, it's like the price range. Usually it's around, I want to say three to five hundred. Three to five hundred dollars. <laughs> That's three to five hundred dollars is really, really low right. for a decent quality digital piano. That's 88 keys, fully weighted and has a decent quality piano sound with like the good feeling. Okay, so these are actually called Nords. They have a lot of these synthesizer functions, which means that, you know, you're gonna be playing a lot of these crazy sounds that you don't really need to if you're just playing the piano. So don't get Nord because you're gonna be paying for a lot more than what you need. Beethoven or Mozart? Beethoven. Do you know which one is it that goes dun 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 dun? I've heard that one, yeah. Which one is that one? I'm gonna go with nine. <laughs> no, it's number five. Five? Yeah. So now we get to a piano that I actually would recommend to people. Okay, this is the Yamaha P125. I don't know exactly how much money it goes for. This piano, I would say, is the best in its price range. This is a great piano to start with because it has onboard speakers. So actually, I used the Yamaha P155 for many years. So 
so I highly recommend the P-Series, okay? So here is the little brother of the Yamaha P125, which is the Yamaha P45, okay? So the Yamaha P45, it's really entry level. As you can see here, the speakers are much smaller. You know, it's not gonna get as loud. And the piano seems like it's a little bit cheaper. The keys feel a little bit cheaper with more plastic. It's also easier to press down, which is not that great if you're trying to build technique as a real pianist, okay? Overall, the P-Series, you can't go wrong with that. What instrument's better, piano or guitar? Yeah, I would say guitar, because I play guitar. Oh no, no, you're missing out, buddy. All right. <laughs> All right. Who's your favorite classical composer? Don't know too many, to be honest. Oh my god. Yeah, sorry. You uncultured I heathen. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Are you Korean? Yeah, I am Korean. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of really great Korean pianists. Do you know Sun Jin Cho? No, I don't. You don't know Sun Jin Cho? Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, it's a lonely world out here. Uh, what's better, piano or violin? Piano. That's why violinists suck it. All right, so this is the Williams. Look at how nice this looks, right? It looks so nice with like this huge finish and it's only $500. <laughs> I mean, let me just play it. First of all, the piano sounds like crap. And... and the keys just feel so plasticky and cheap. Okay, so yes, even though it looks gorgeous, in the end, you're gonna get screwed. This one is the Roland MP200. Uh, it's at, what, $2,000? <laughs> Which is quite expensive. <laughs> Okay, the, the keyboard feel has a little springy action that's a little bit weird. Like you're not gonna find this kind of springy action on a real acoustic grand piano. Um, but it sounds very good. There's definitely some good weight to the keyboard feeling. Like. What are you doing here in Guitar Center today? I'm actually looking for a guitar so I can get back into music. And how much are you looking to spend today? I don't know, you gotta ask the wife that question. <laughs> I, I, honestly, how much how much can we spend today? Three hundred. Three hundred? Yeah, maybe like three hundred, two, two or three hundred. Oh There's no, you gotta there. up that. Come yeah. on, my advice is go all in. <laughs> a thousand at least. Yeah, a thousand. Who's the best? I like Mozart. Yeah. Did you watch the movie Amadeus? I did. That's yeah, right. yeah. Amadeus. Every time Mozart he plays something, he does like the laugh afterwards. <laughs> So what you should do to really annoy your wife is like uh -huh. you just play something, uh -huh. you go. Oh! <laughs> there you go. So besides getting a piano, you're also gonna want to get a bench and a stand in case the piano doesn't come with one. Okay. So what you never want to get is this one because this one only comes in one size. The thing about the piano bench is that your seating position is really important in terms of how much control you're going to have over your fingers. What you generally want is you want to get one of these kind of benches that have the adjustable kind of things, the exact height that you want. Um, and I actually have a recommended bench that I personally use down in the description below. It's called a hydraulic bench and I highly recommend getting that one if you have the budget for it. Okay, it's around $200. Let's talk about stands, okay? These are the most common one. They're called X style stands, okay? And the problem with these stands is that when you actually try to play, your knees are gonna bump into the stand. So the one I use at home is like something called like the tabletop stand. And that one I highly recommend because that gives your knees enough room under the piano itself. So I hope I helped a little bit today. But the thing is, if you go to these stores, right, they don't always have the best selection on stock. That's because there's just too many digital pianos out there. And also a lot of customers, they they come into the store, they don't buy it from the store, but they buy it online later. People like me. <laughs> I have a few brands that I recommend, Yamaha and Kawaii, and I have a few models that I will recommend to pianists who are just starting out. So they can be found right here, okay? And of course, uh, I have all the links to the accessories and stuff that you might need in the description below. And I know a lot of you guys want to know how to install LEDs onto a piano. So that's actually a pretty simple part, but I'm not going to reveal it unless this video gets 50,000 likes, okay? So get this video to 50,000 likes and I will reveal how to do LEDs on a digital piano. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.